I'm Alex. I'm Dan. I'm James. And I'm Josh. We're the Ragamuffins. And this is our 2000 Trees 2023 preview. So we're going to be going to 2000 Trees this year. We had an amazing time last year. We can't wait to go back. And this lineup is absolutely stacked. From top to bottom, completely stacked. And we're going to start on the Wednesday. We've got the early bird. We're going to be there, I think, having such a great time there last year. Unfortunately, you weren't there on the early bird. Correct. <laughs> but now this year you are. I wouldn't miss it for the world, honestly. This festival has really sold me and I plan to basically make it an annual pilgrimage every time. And Regardless maybe. of lineup, I think, as well. That good. That's so, something that that's something that Dan said in the past mm-hmm. before. Is like regardless of the trees lineup, it's, it's always worthwhile good. event just because the vibe is basically just immaculate. So but bonus, the lineup's great this year as well. It is. Let's look at this Wednesday. Who are we excited to see at the early party? I mean, holding absence. I think it goes without saying. Um, after seeing them there last year and, and them talking about how they've played pretty much every stage that. Having like the main stage later on in the week is going to be fantastic, but also then seeing them on the forest stage in that kind of more intimate atmosphere, I wonder what kind of set they're going to do because they've teased about doing different sets. So maybe if it's an acoustic strip back one like they've done before, that'll be very interesting. We saw that a little bit of download last no, year. I think it'll still be a full band set. You reckon? They might just put some special songs in there for us. Either way, I think it's going to be a fantastic set there um, and definitely one that I'm not missing out on. Who are you excited to see, Josh? Well, essentially, I've got here that I want to see everybody on the forest uh, stage on the Wednesday. I think um, for me, uh, Tiger Cub is always somebody who um, so I think I've seen maybe once, twice, I don't know, thrice. Who knows? But um, no, they were uh, last year, mate. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, no, essentially, Tiger Cub, um, sort of really sort of moody, atmospheric. I would almost say sort of like a, a sort of a new depiction of grunge in some ways. Um, I absolutely love them. And to be honest, Bob Villain um, are doing bits and will continue to do so. And I'm going to put it here now that I would maybe like to see if I could do a bit of a cheeky stage dive during their set in the forest. But we'll see how we go. We shall gather. We shall catch you. And this is why I can always count on these guys. My brothers. Who are you excited for, Dan? I've really come to love Delay the Liar since we saw them at Underground Festival um, a little while back. Uh, over a year ago now, actually. And then seeing them at 2000 Trees last year as well. Their set was really really good and they've got some new music coming out now as well so seeing them on the forest i think is gonna be really really great and also i think we can't ignore preston eco's final ever show in the forest at 2000 trees that they're, they're a very treesy band yeah it's so a bit it's gonna be a nice send-off for them yeah I think. it's a bit bittersweet because last year we saw them and they played on what was called i think the, the new, new stage yeah and it was a very rowdy like party vibe and everyone and as i came away from that set it was like wow that's a band that are really gonna go on to do great things and now uh, unfortunately it's going to be their final show so um it's sort of bittersweet for that memory to be like the last time i saw them at trees but we'll give them a proper send oh we will give that show everything i reckon if anything just by that this first day just as like a pre-show is absolutely stacked and it's going to be such a laugh so highly recommend like if, if tickets are still there for it grab it I don't know if they well, are. Imagine they? missing out. It's, it's too good. Too good to miss. And then we're going to have a lovely time the rest of that evening. Dance away in the silent disco in the forest. Silent disco, baby. Get, get our groove on. But then we're going to come to the main three days of the festival. Here we go. So as we look to the Thursday, um, the first band that jumps out to me is Unpeople, which is uh, a new band for some of the members of Press Tomiko. So as one chapter closes, another begins. How beautiful. It's the very next day. The very next day. It's the circle of life. Oh no, Christ. <laughs> Lovely. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a band that we've kind of become a bit more familiar with and we've had the lucky chance of interviewing frontman Harvey and that's Graphic Nature. They're going to put on, I think, a fantastic show. They've released their latest album. It's absolutely killing it. I think it came back out in February. Um, absolutely amazing. And I'm thoroughly looking forward to the first chance that I'm actually going to get to see them live because I believe some of you have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't make it. Year. So I think I've, hearing the back of how, how good that was and what a great experience it was, uh, I'm, I'm very, very eager to be there front and centre and to have an absolute ball. 
to, to give context of how many bands I'm planning to see at 2003 is I was literally looking into getting like army ration food packs <laughs> so that I don't really have to stop and queue up for food or anything like that. I can just whip out a cheeky pouch of like uh, veg, sausage and beans and just sort of like... <laughs> they need to make some kind of nicotine pack with <laughs> yeah. food. Yeah, just sort of like slow it down while <laughs> running to the next stage. But essentially, um, for me on this Thursday, um, I would say uh, Martha is a band who literally um i think was actually one of my top most streamed artists on uh spotify one year actually and it's sort of like a bouncy sort of like positive it's got sort of like this is kind of like it sounds negative but it kind of fits it's like kind of like a bit of a scrappy pop punk it's sort of like a sort of like a pop punk with like a bit of an edge that borders into indie and they got a good sense of humor they're literally from a place called pity me in durham and uh, I think they uh, they like to use that as a selling point for their music, which kind of encapsulates a sort of like, I don't know, emotional sort of like um, bouncy pop punk sort of vibes. And then as well, you've got um, Narrowhead. So as as someone myself who used to be in like a grunge band, um, it's really fun to see sort of this sort of like new depiction of sort of like, uh, I don't know, sort of like, well, I guess sort of like a modern depiction of grunge, right? A band lower down on, on this day that I'm really looking forward to, I know Josh is as well, it's Prince Daddy and the Hyena. Yeah. Like, I think what Trees have done well on this lineup is they've got a lot of bands from America and, and other places overseas that don't really come around these parts very often. Like the Prince Daddy and the Hyena, there's Joyce Manor that we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, I, I love Prince Daddy and the Hyena. Their, their album that they released last year was one of my favourites of the year and very, very excited to finally see them live. Yeah, as as Dan says, like if you if if uh, maybe like Joyce Manor or like Meat Wave or uh, Microwave etc. sort of appeals to you on this lineup, and you haven't got Prince Daddy and the Hyena sort of in your uh, in your setting your sights and sort it out <laughs> in the nicest possible way. <laughs> and then of course, I also have to mention the Wonder Years and Aaron West and the Roaring Twenties as well, which I'm hope I don't know for sure. I'm hoping it's a Forest set because that will just be really really cute. We also came off the back of Takedown Festival recently and saw Ithaca. So after a great amount of energy there and enjoying that set and enjoying the album, I think if we can make our way there, we'll be seeing that set as well. Let's learn all the lyrics this time. Get some finger pointing in this time rather yeah. than just the aggressive head bobbing of appreciation <laughs> of, of, uh, of Takedown Festival. Oh, I saw Alex singing a few words. Yeah, he's got a lovely little yeah. voice, bless him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shall we talk about the Thursday Night Headliners? Yeah, uh, soft play, formerly known as Slaves, a big return for them. Oh, and the set is almost like by audience request. Um, pretty, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, we've put our ten songs in. Um, if if you listeners and watchers at home, if you could please at least vote for the song "Bugs," I would be forever grateful. I just need that to happen. You have to wonder as well. Obviously, it's a new name. Whether or not we will be getting any new songs. Uh, That's a good point. No, they be cooking. They are cooking. Yeah. So. Uh, Let's let them cook, see what happens. Mm. Just some last mentions as well, quick ones. If you like fun, then go and see Eagles of Death Metal. And um, also, if you're into your sort of like post-punk, sort of in the vein of Idols, Fontaine's DC, um, etc., then um, Kid Capici is one who I would uh, definitely sort of give a recommendation for. I'm seeing here on the bill that basically after them is Bob Villain and they actually have like a song together so I'm sure that hopefully they might come out and, and do that one that would be really good because it's nice. an absolute bop. Anyway there's loads of bands on this day that we could talk about but let's move on because otherwise we're going to run out of time. Friday I think to kick off the day surely Origami Angel yeah, with them, I feel like it's definitely going to be crowd surfers galore, people singing their hearts out. I'm probably, yeah, literally, I'm probably going to throw my voice out, literally, uh, sort of, what is it, first band of the day. My goodness. I'm very intrigued to see Empire State Bastard. We're going to get the preview and see them for the first time. Is it their first UK performance at Download? No, they've uh, just done a tour. Just done a tour. Okay. I've been trying to stay away from anything, so kind of want to take it in as it comes, but from kind of what I'm I'm hearing it's going to be like I have a lot of intrigue and just that mystery of the unknown I think is what's going to really draw me to that so I'm hoping for something very very good uh that will really blow me away out of that also it's huge to have someone like Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro and what's his name from Slayer oh Dave Lombardo yeah, yeah. on the drums potentially not confirmed, but potentially playing drums for Empire State Bastards at 2000 Trees, which is just down the road from us. They're going to be like right over there. 
Uh, as I look at this day, a band that jumps out to me is Harriet. Um, they played last year and it was ferocious, intense. And I think since then, um, sort of the tours that you've, we've seen them go on over, over the past year, I think has given them uh, just a massive step up. And I think the confidence to just demolish everything in sight, really. Is and be... even like the shout outs that bigger bands are giving them. when the, I think it was the Trivium tour. But hey, if you're then talking about them on stage and you're seeing like these big, big names in metal music, recognizing how good they are and shouting them out. There's something there that if you haven't got into them, you need to go and check out. There is a reason for that. So don't miss it. The excerpts were the first ever band that I saw at my first 2000 Trees back in 2016. And there are accusations that I was already incredibly drunk by that point. But the truth is I'd had half a beer and I was just enjoying the excerpts and the vibe so much that I appeared intoxicated. You say that. Um, I was purely high off of vibes alone and the excerpts really brought those vibes. And yeah, I'm going to do everything I can to go and see them again. You just hyped me the fuck up then. I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> now. You'll get the opportunity to see a little mosh pit of dinosaurs if you want to go see Dinosaur Pile Up. I remember seeing them last year and seeing a load of people in those outfits and just kind of seeing them one by one making their way through. That was great. And just seeing like from afar, like some good tunes being played, but also like a little bit of mosh pits. A lot of fun, really enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I think I want to check that out again. Dinosaur Pile Up are just like a really good party band. Yeah. Like, mm. They bring riffs. They always sound great. The pits are always great fun. It's just the best. Might pit with some dinosaurs this year. I will be intoxicated by that point. Yes. Good lad. For sure. I think another one that they've got, as, as we were saying earlier about sort of like the uh, the American bands is um, Kirby Khan. Um, yes. Which is it's strange actually because I feel like they've actually been around. They're like malevolence. They've been around for years and suddenly something's just kind of yeah. clicked and like every, they're sort of everybody's talking about them. Um I mean, I'm really excited to see that. Throw some uh, two steps and uh, maybe a cheeky, cheeky spin kick here and there. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe see how silly and goofy we is are. That, on is that day. a threat? I also basically want to give a big shout out to, well, the festival bookers for getting Joyce Manor on. Well, hey, hell yeah. Yeah. What's huge? A, what a treat. We're being 2000 fed. treats. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's like trees, but moving anyone on. Anyone else? <laughs> Also, with additions to the lineup, such as bands such as like Hellers for Heroes, um, Hundred Reasons, Rival Schools, um, even I border into Pitch Shifter as well. Like I feel like uh, they've sort of really grasped like a market of people who were sort of into into those bands and say like around 2005 era and stuff like that. And it's just great to see that I, I think some of them, I think they've uh, been away for a little bit and they're coming back and stuff and. Uh, I think for some people who grew up with those bands, we're probably going to just, it would be interesting just to watch the crowd reaction for those acts because I think it will be something special. A hundred percent. I think it'll be really special. Another band that falls under that category, Josh, is probably our headliners for Friday night, Bullet For My Valentine. Um, that well, it's going to be good. No, uh, when this first got announced, I'll be honest, I was a bit, uh, for, a, for a few minutes, I was a bit like, oh, what? And then the more I thought about it, the more I realised, hang on a second, lads. I think it's this mainly, is fucking brilliant. It's mainly because there were so many predictions going around that seemed really, really plausible. Uh, yeah. And then Bullet For My Valentine were just announced seemingly out of nowhere. And like everyone was a bit like, oh, really? Them? But then, like you said, it kind of all settled down a bit. And it's like, no, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think it's a really good booking, personally. When you stop and think about the fucking bangers, when, when the first few notes of Tears Don't Fall hit, when they've done their encore... My tears will start falling. <laughs> I could literally chat about every single one of these. And I will. Yeah. <laughs> Kicking off the day really strong with Witch Fever, who know better to chat about Witch Fever is your boy. Love them. Yeah. They supported Cancer Bats when we saw them in Oxford. And it was um, one of those times where you just you see a support band and it's like, yes, I'm hooked straight away. They've got this sort of post-punk, like, yeah, really it's, gritty, it's rough and ready vibe. quite atmospheric and sort yeah. of leans into the sort of darker tone of post-punk. Um, yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to it, Casey. It was our first gig of the year this year and a kind of really, really strong way to kick off 2023, I think, for us. Me probably being the least familiar with their music out of the three of us. With that kind of being their first shows back, you could still feel the emotion so much in that room. And I think it was something very special. And coming out from that night, it, it was something that kind of really struck me and then has kind of resonated. And I've gone back and listened to the music since. And so seeing them on this lineup now with new songs that have come out, like they played on that, and who knows what the future's going to hold. 
I think it's really, really cool to see them on there. Um, and I'm very, very excited to see them again. Well, like you said earlier, a good thing that Trees do is they bring around um, American, like North American bands that don't often come here or do like extended tours here. And the two that stick out to me are Fleshwater and Koyo. I think they're going to be two sets that are going to be, for me, just like, just super fun. I'm, I'm really like, the more I listen to that, the latest Fleshwater record, I'm, the more I'm just like falling in love with it completely. So I think... By the time this rolls around, I'm going to be going berserk. I think uh, Fleshwater are absolutely ones to watch. Like, if you if you don't know, no. Looking at the proposed times, um, it looks like it goes Koyo into High Viz into Fleshwater. Like, literally, <laughs> duh, duh, duh. like that's that's the play. That's, um, the, that's, so, that's the play. That's the play. <laughs> so, um, essentially, High Viz, and I'm going to say something that is going to rile some people now, and I'm ready for it. I think High Viz are like literally hardcore's answer to the Smiths. So yeah, take a listen to them. If you agree, disagree, let us know in the comments. Um, but yeah, really excited. Josh will be there to argue with you. We can have we can do what normal people do on the internet and have calm debates and comment sections. I'm quite looking forward to seeing Chelsea Grin. I'm going to give them more of a listen leading up to it, but it's, it's one that I've seen straight away. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in those pits. That's going to happen. Again, like legendary band and massive props to the bookers for, for securing that, for sure. Mm -hmm. Massive props as well for booking American football. Like, I saw rumours of it beforehand that they may well have been booked, that they were going to be in that soon. I was just, keeping my expectations though, I was like, nah, it probably, probably won't be American football. Just holding on to that little bit of hope, but not wanting to, it's the hope that kills you, you know. But when they were finally announced, I was like, Yes, I I am so excited, and I'm really intrigued to see what the vibe's going to be. Is it going to be like a gentle sway, or is it going to be like be. the thing where you're climbing over other people to try and get your like finger point sort of the highest? I'm the biggest fan. <laughs> Do you know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to touch God. So. Yeah, literally, <laughs> like a Renaissance painting. I don't yeah. know. I, I'm I'm excited to see what the vibe's going to be. So I recently come back from Takedown Festival, and we saw Load there. They absolutely slayed it. It was fantastic. They always slay it. Every single time. Just Slay. 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 <laughs> Call me off guard with that, bro. <laughs> but yeah, like they, they killed it. I'm really excited to see them, especially in this kind of atmosphere. I think they're going to go down really well at 2000 Trees. Mm. Uh, despite it coming out last year, I've actually discovered really recently Death of Anna's latest album, The Present is a Foreign Land, and literally just fallen in love with it. Um, it's become one of my favourites of this year, even though it was from last year. I'm just very, very excited for their set. I think it's going to be very fun. A lot of those songs on that album are very sort of like big anthemic sort of vibes to me so hopefully if um you know if the crowd's loud it should be pretty pretty amazing to hear those songs i mean we don't really need to talk about holding absence anymore on this channel because if you've seen us before we love them they're amazing so um yeah so we'll, we'll be there. go and check them out on main stage that's all you need to do and a bit later on in the day we have pitch shifter on the cave stage um they sort of bring sort of like a that sort of old school industrial sort of new metal vibe sort of think along the lines of um power man 5000 and like orgy etc but at the end of the day they sound like uh, a more sort of like treble heavy version of the prodigy to be honest and i'm i'm really excited for it they were actually a band that i genuinely had sort of heard of before then saw them on the trees lineup and checked them out through seeing on them on the poster They're quite an older band aren't they absolutely well. absolutely and um i'm i'm really excited to check it out and give it pop which leads into frank carter and the rattlesnakes yeah don't forget the rattlesnakes can't can't be they, doing they that they don't like being forgotten sorry um they've but, had lime trees before uh yes i think they have um a few years ago now though um but yeah good to see them returning i saw them at um they set a download last year where they were brought in at relatively short notice and after they kind of lost me a bit with kind of a couple of their recent releases. Um, but they really won me back at that download set. And I thought they're a future download, potentially a future head download headliner. So why not headline trees for now? Well, they'll put on a really great show. They're always really, really good fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty casual Frank Carter fan. I think I'd know like, you know, the big tunes, but I'm very, very excited for this. And I think it's, I think for them, they'll be looking at this as a chance to prove, to download, hey, this is what we're made of in a headliner slot. So sure, yeah. it's going to be the sort of set and closing the weekend off as well. So it's going to have to go out with a bang, I think. And uh, I'm sure they will deliver in spades. So I think by all of this, you can see how stacked 2000 Trees is this year. Uh, we are extremely excited to go back again after last year. Um, 
just the vibes of it, I think is fantastic. So if if you enjoy music, this is a festival just for you. Make sure you let us know which bands you're most excited for in the comments. And if you see the Ragamuffin flag in the campsite, come and say hello. 